coach on the road, taking you guys behind the scenes with MLB stars of the game. And I'm over here in the Pirates locker room, and I got the man here for the Pirates. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Uh, Key Brown Hayes, third baseman for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And where are you from? Houston, Texas. Use every kid dream of playing in the big leagues. Yes, you in the big leagues. What's that feeling like? Uh, it's awesome uh, just being able to do this. Uh, I mean, in a sense, you say it like this is my job, but, um, but being able to play a game for a living is, I mean, it's a lot of kids' dreams. and. Um, just growing up around baseball, uh, this is what I wanted to do um, whenever, since I was a little kid, since I um, knew what baseball was. So um, just a great, great feeling for uh, to be, be able to do this every day and just try not to take it for granted. As I mentioned, I scouted for five major league teams. The third major league team I scouted for was the Pirates. Okay. So, you know, I, I feel like we got a little bond going on here. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, I mean, what would you say to that youngster that's inspired to play in the big leagues? Um, I think just continue to work hard each and every day, find something to get better at each and every day. And um, lastly, you just got to have fun doing it. Um, but, I mean, I think the biggest thing is just um, working at it every single day if, if, you, if you're able to and, um, just find a way to get better each and every day. And guys think you guys just show up at the ballpark and play. They don't understand the dues that you got to pay along the way to play in this game. Yeah, I mean, it starts at a young age, just learning the fundamentals. Um, I think that's the biggest thing uh, for the most part. Every guy that's played in the big leagues, um, I mean, they've mastered the fundamentals. And then, um, I think the guys that whenever they're able to stay, they're able to, um, what's the word? Uh, They've mastered the fundamentals and then just all the routine plays and stuff like that. They're able to um, do do all that at a high rate. So um, a couple of my coaches growing up always just said like being uh, extraordinary at the ordinary, which is basically like taking care of the routine plays and um, stuff like that. Now I always tell my guys that you got to play hard, work hard, and be dedicated and committed to the game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, to do anything at the highest level, you definitely got to be uh, dedicated, committed to it. Um, I mean, there's, there's, I'm sure there's a few guys that their ability, talent, all that stuff, is able, or they're able to maybe do the bare minimum. But, maybe like a Griffey uh, Jr. <laughs> but even, I mean, even those guys, uh, people wouldn't think, but I mean, they've, like, just being around the game, my dad playing, um, all the guys he played with, like he told me Tony Gwynn was hitting like 360 at the t at like a month and a half into the season and was saying like he didn't feel right. So it's, I mean, guy like that, Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it. Um, I mean, that's that goes to show you how much, if you want to be good, how much um, goes in the um, playing this game, especially baseball. So since you're going to get ahead of me and bring up your dad, let's talk about your dad. Mm -hmm. He played in the big leagues, put some time in, paid his dues up here. Mm -hmm. I mean, what type of role did that play for you to get here? Or inspiration? Um, a lot, yeah. Him and uh, I have an older brother that played um, in the minor leagues. and uh, I think just having them at a very young age, mm -hmm. um, them knowing what it looked like, um, having me ahead of the curve whenever I was a little kid um, helped me for whenever I, uh, as I got older and then ultimately now just really just knowing the fundamentals of baseball, knowing the game within the game, um, all that stuff. I feel like I knew it at a super young age, which I think helped me because I wasn't always the fastest, strongest, uh, but when it came to like knowing the game and baseball decisions, like I was ahead of the curve with that, which I think helped a lot. Did you hang out in the major league locker rooms as a shorty? Uh, no, my dad, uh, or I, he retired. I was four when he retired, oh, so I don't okay. know. My, I have two older brothers that they were right there in the middle of it. So, uh, so what was your 60 time? Hmm? What was your 60 time? My fastest 60, I think, was like a 6'9", but six, I, I would average like a 7'1", seven, 7'3", seven, oh, okay. even. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I mean, I always knew how to run the bases, and I could still steal bases whenever I was in high school, whenever I go to showcases and stuff like that. So, so you was the man, in other words? Kind of. I mean, 
another thing, like my dad and my mom and all them always told me just because they knew about Latin players and all that, like there's always someone better. Um, you might be the best one on your team or in your area, but there's always someone just as good. So that always filled me for whenever I went out of town to play, like I always wanted to be the best one. Who were some of the players that mentored you along the way? Um, like with the Pirates or? Just players um, in general that you idolized, looked up to? Uh, Gary Sheffield a little bit. Um, from a young age, got to talk to him a lot. Um, Mike Jackson. Uh, Jesse Barfield, those are both of those guys um, worked at my dad's a facility in Houston. They worked there um, back in the day. Ron Jones, I don't know if you know that name. Um, who else? There's a lot of guys. I mean, I was fortunate to be be able to meet a lot of Dusty Baker. He's a really big. Oh, now you go real out the heavyweight. Yeah, now. he's a really big role model. Um, so yeah, I mean, I always got to be around um, as I was getting a little older, like whenever like he would be in town playing the Astros, he would always let us come in the clubhouse. And, um, so there, there's a lot of guys. I'm probably forgetting some names, but- Were you getting the autographs? Were you getting autographs back in them days? Uh, a come little on, bit, uh, not really. Uh, okay, uh, you got to draw for that at all. <laughs> yeah, I was real quiet back, like whenever I was a kid. So, mm -hmm. I mean, just being able to meet him and just see them like that was good enough for me I never every now and then they give me like some batting gloves or something like that but I never was really um, one to like ask for autographs or anything first major league hit um, it was 2020 off jo uh, John Lester double the left left field line at home first major league home run uh, Dan Winkler. It was the same game, actually, um, on my debut. That was always one thing I wanted to do was hit a home run in my debut, and um, I was able to. So You got the balls? Awesome. Yeah, I got both of them. Oh, okay, I'm coming still. <laughs> <laughs> Last yeah. question. Every kid dream playing in the big leagues, walking this locker room for the very first time, seeing you uniform hanging up, what was that feeling like? Um, I mean, really going all the way back to just getting that call, just uh, – I mean, for me, I just started smiling just because I know how far I've came um, as a, since I was little and just this is what I always wanted to do. And, um, unfortunately, my debut year was in the COVID year, but um, I mean, it's still special just to come in there, see your name with the major league uniform and um, just being the nerves that you have uh, that day. And um, yeah, I mean, fortunately, I was able to get to Pittsburgh like two days before they came off the road. So I got to practice like a day or two on the field. It wasn't like a fly in that morning type of thing. So, um, and then a lot of the guys that were on the team, like I had been in big league camp, so I knew all of them from, uh, from being in the organization. And uh, so, I mean, I was nervous, but I was comfortable at the same time. And um, I think once I got my first hit out of the way, that was whenever I was like, all right, I belong. And your home run? Yeah. <laughs> in the same day? Yeah, my first at bat, grounded out, second at bat, struck out. And then my third at bat, I just remember, like, all right, let's be aggressive, like, stop thinking. And then I got the hit, and then from there on out, I was, I was good. Did you cry? Uh, no, he I didn't cry. He no. cried. No, I didn't cry. Um, I think more, I think I just more was just like, man, like finally I'm here. I had one day, like I always knew one day I would be playing up here and, um, since I was a young kid, so. Did mama cry? I'm sure, I'm we sure her and cry. my dad. Dad cried, my, my dad, boy for sure. He, he's a big cry baby. But, uh, I'll make sure you see this too. <laughs> he, he knows, he, um, but he, I mean, he's one of my biggest supporters. Um, and then my family, like they've always been there for me, so all the way through since I was a little kid. So. Coach on the road with the man Hayes. Appreciate right. it. Yes, sir. All nice right. to meet you. Thanks a lot. Same nice to meet you. Thanks. We talked about late later on in his life, and he was saying about how young men don't play baseball. We we had that conversation. So yeah, he he'd be honored about what what you're doing and having this league and trying to have more interest yeah. for you know african americans playing baseball because it's i heard it was like six percent and there are a lot of talented you know african american players out there they really are and give okay. me a for that uh, dedication service
<laughs> that sounds good. Tell all your family and friends when they're watching it to hit that subscribe button. You need a thousand subscribers.